Welcome into the first fifth quarter of the year. I'm Mason Kern. He's Marco Yurkovich. And Marco, lots of changes around our uh, local area for high school football team. Should make for some interesting storylines, though. Absolutely. That's right. And one of the biggest changes at Grand Island Senior High, where the Islanders are playing their first game without Jeff Tomlin. That's right. Creighton Reed is the new man in town, looking to beat Lincoln Southeast to start the season. But it's a tough task. Trey Boland, the senior quarterback, scanning his options, tossing it up. And Nate Applegate makes the grab, called a touchdown for the Knights, who take a 14-6 lead in the second quarter. But the Islanders making plays on defense later. Boland looking for his man. But Roman DeVault makes the read and the pick. Islanders get the ball back. Gavin Sem trying to make things happen before the half for GI, but Xavion Campbell is there. He houses the pick six to give the Knights the momentum. The Islanders fall to the Knights 35 to 20. Staying in Class A, Carney kicking off their season in style against North Platte. Bearcats are calling Coke Stadium home for tonight's matchup, and it's a packed house. The student section is hyped, and the Carney defense is also ecstatic. They're calling the North Platte backfield home. Bearcats defense was stout all night. Now Kearney on offense, check this out. Quarterback Ruben Novacek escapes the pocket and lowers the Truck. shoulder to move the chains on a crucial third down. Bearcats big game hunting now. Novacek launching deep and it's Caden John. He hauls it in on the other end. The 44-yard score is the first of the season for Kearney as they go on to beat North Platte in a shutout 20 to nothing. And heading to Dawson County now for Six-man football between Ansley Litchfield and SEM. First quarter, Mustangs in striking distance. Chance Dockey taking the pitch and jogs in untouched. SEM takes a two-score lead over the Spartans in the second. Covered out of the backfield. He makes the Spartans pay. The TD puts SEM up 22-6. Mustangs start to pour it on in the second half. Maddox Jones expertly following his blockers and scores on the long touchdown run. SEM win big over Ansley Litchfield 52-20, starting the season off 1-0. We played okay. Like you said, we came out a little tight. Uh, Ansley's a good team. They just lack a little depth, so I think we just kind of warm down in the end. Feels good, but just one game, just 1-0. Just a start, though. We got a lot of things to work on on both sides of the ball, so we'll, we'll put some work in this week and see how it goes next week. Parkview Christians coming off a trip to the state semifinals. The Patriots open with Hampton this year. They've got a pretty good squad. Wyatt Dozy to Bryce Joseph. Big number zero rumbling in for the score. There's a lot of those for Hampton tonight. The Hawks soar to a 72-28 win. Hastings hosting York at Lloyd Wilson Field. Tigers faithful out in full force. We picked this one up in the second quarter. Hastings already up 14-3, but York responding Emmett Dirks locates Declan Peterson. He dives into the end zone, cutting the lead to 14-10. Now only two seconds left on the clock in the first half. The Dukes looking to take the lead, but Hastings stuffs it. They head back to the locker room with the lead. Hastings, they had a strong second half, but the Dukes are too much. York wins 17 to 14. Well, back in Grand Island, where Kevin Stein is leading Northwest against Scotts Bluff. Vikings down and trying to come back. Zane Harb takes the handoff and punches it up the guts. Emilio Cervantes stops it from being a bigger game. Later in the third, Gavin Hubbold scrambling around, looking at the end zone, lobs it up, but it's picked off by Keon Delgado. A little bobble, but it's called a touchback, and then the Bearcats go deep. Nate Kelly targets Dawson Barrett, who gets behind his man. He's gone for six. Nice attempt to tackle by Northwest, but the Vikings fall tonight 31-6. to six. And now it's the Battle of the Birds in Aurora tonight as the take on the Blue Jays of Pierce. Booker Shireman starts things out with this toss to Vendel Jutsky, and it's an easy run in for six. But Pierce would answer. Calden Fritz running behind his pads here and gets the ball across the goal line after the PAT. The Blue Jays were up by one. Aurora were able to respond, though. Shireman with a do-it-yourself attitude, and it's off to the races. He gets the blocks. We're going to speed this one up for you as he finds his way into the end zone. But in the end, it's the Blue Jays winning 41-28. to And heading back west and stepping... C1 to C2, Wood River hosting Centura. Eagles up 14-0, but just before the half, Centura knocking on the door. Fourth down, and Trevin Grabowski keeps those legs churning, and Centura convert. Now with just three seconds left in the half, goal to go scenario, but the Eagles defense stands firm and keeps Centura off the board. Wood River with a commanding season opening win, 33-20. 
out in St. Paul now where Kearney Catholic is looking for a win on the road to start the year. Pete Homan takes the handoff up the gut, but Cody Kujak meets him in the gap and stuffs it. Both teams defending tough out of the gate. Stars settle for a field goal on the opening drive. Solomon Weens knocks it through the uprights for the first points of the year. Stars up 3-0. Wildcats looking to respond, but Homan must have gotten fired up after the big hit on offense. Chases down Alex Meineke for the sack. The Stars get their first win of the year on the road, 19-7. Now St. Cecilia hosts Grand Island Central Catholic at Duncan Field. Students absolutely hyped for the season opener. Starting in the first quarter, it's a junior connection. Grayson Sack lobbing it up to Graham Stava for the first touchdown of the game. But missing the extra point, GICC goes up six. The Crusaders looking to do it again, but backs against the wall on fourth down. Jacob Burns makes it a turnover on downs, but the Blue Hawks fail to take advantage. GICC back on offense. This time's a handoff. Axel Escalante barrels it in for another touchdown. GICC takes the win 41. One to 13. To Donovan now, they welcome in the Amherst Broncos. The Broncos are driving late in the first half. Kyler Drones drops back and throws it to Tyler Arada, who shows he knows how to juggle. Check out that grab, commanding catch, and it's a big touchdown for the Broncos. But the scoring remains low with this one out in the mountain time. Now out to the mountain time zone. Gothenburg visiting Ogallala. Swedes down a possession early, but they get a boost with a big 50-yard kickoff return from Jackson Schwanz to jumpstart the drive. Gothenburg would capitalize in the red zone. Landon Maras check option toss to Evan Johnson. He finds the edge and the end zone for six. Johnson would find Pager again later in the half. Gothenburg top Ogallala 35-22. Meanwhile, up north, Ainsworth is out at Hardington, Newcastle. The Bulldogs, they're hosting in this one, taking the snap and handing it off to Morgan Kinney. But Aiden Joseph Rosner jumps off the line, tearing him down for no gain on the play. Moving the ball for the Wildcats, Cole Himes gets the snap, faking the handoff at quarterback, and off he goes to the races. Knocked out of bounds by Ainsworth at the 10-yard line after the gainer. Later on for Hardington, it's Ag Himes again with the keeper. He's going to run it all the way in down for six after he takes the handoff in this one. It's a close one toward the end, but Hardington Newcastle wins by 20, 54 to 34.